friends. I've been doing a lot of animating in the built-in editor in Game Maker Studio lately, and I just want to share some useful tips I've learned in the last couple of years. I just feel very comfortable drawing in Game Maker Editor and even more confident when it comes to animating. This is an incredible tool that most artists don't understand how to utilize. I watched the video presentation on the new particle system in Game Maker and I'm excited to play around with it, but I wanted to show you guys an alternative to that. Probably my absolute favorite part of game dev is creating juicy, flashy, hand-drawn particle and attack effects. And I want to show you guys that not only can you draw your own particle effects, but you can do it easily and have fun in the process. Muzzle flashes, lasers, explosions, power-ups. I do all my effects in the Game Maker Editor, so let's get digital. So let's say you're working on a sprite animation and you realize you need to change a few pixels or a particular area. The problem is it's a long animation and you would have to change every frame. This is a problem I have encountered many times and it was during one of these times I had a revelation. I discovered I could make quick changes to animations by playing the animation and drawing over it in real time. I first tried clicking the mouse aggressively and soon wondered, what if I just hold the mouse button down? Eureka! It worked. But then, the greatest revelation of all. I can use this technique to draw hypernatural particle effects by hand in real time. I started off experimenting with a group of empty frames and came up with some weird animations, like the one you see here. I tried to make a torch with a few things going on, so I made the initial flames with some stamps I made. I drew some little smoke clouds and reduced the opacity by copying them and turning the alpha down on the color selected. I'm not crazy about how my flame patterns turned out, but you can see that the single pixel embers work really well with this technique. Likewise, something like snow also looks good. I just zigzag the cursor down and it's a winter wonderland. Here I've got like a glowing energy ball and you can see I've just drawn different brushes going into and orbiting it. The end result here is pretty cool and pretty natural looking. Next I took a couple of radical dudes and thought I'd go for a swirling teleportation effect. So I swirled the cursor around them and then erased half of the overlaps so it would appear as though the effect was going behind them. Thank you. 
When it comes to doing fadeouts, there will be instances when it's easiest to code the sprites alpha decreasing, but a lot of times I'll have multiple layers of a sprite fading at alternating times, and when that's the case, it's usually best to do the fades in the animation. And you can do this by selecting a sprite, making a stamp, and clicking on the color selection. The default color is white usually, but you can select any color to add a tint to your selection. This is useful if your sprite is taking damage or shooting. You can add a red or yellow tint for a few frames, and there's a lot of other reasons you might want to tint a sprite. But I'm just going to slide the alpha down over a few frames to fade these guys out. The end result is not great. It would have looked better with a higher resolution image, but I'm just throwing these together as quick as I can to demonstrate various ideas. And I encourage everyone to find even better applications for this trick. Here I've got a starry sky, and I'm using the trick to try and randomize twinkling stars. Now I want to show you my normal process for doing hand-drawn particles. I start off with a star pattern, and I put that on its own layer at the bottom, and I'm using this as a guide or a stencil so I know my particles are on a straight path. I then lower the opacity of this layer so that when I turn on the onion skinning, I will be able to see the particles from the previous frame. I then begin the tedious task of going forward through frames and drawing the pixels at a specific distance closer. In the animation, the particles are going towards the center, but it's easy in Game Maker to select the frames and reverse their order if you want them to go outward. So now that I have an animation of random place particles going into the center, you might be wondering how we turn this into a loop. At this point, we are going to work backwards. Game Maker allows you to select how many frames before and after you want to be affected by onion skinning. So we want to go to the end of the animation and see what was going on at the beginning. Now that we know where the particles at the beginning will be, we can go backwards through the frames and continue the particles path backwards to the edge of the canvas. If I play this now, you can see I have a seamless loop. Now if I add some glow, I've got a nice little particle effect. So I tried to mix in some of my new trick, and I think it works out pretty good. And there you have it. The purpose of this video was to show you how to have fun drawing particles, and give drawing on a moving picture a go. This technique won't always be the best, and there's nothing wrong with particle systems. They've been making things easy from the beginning. However, I tend to always go back to hand-drawn effects, as they are something I enjoy drawing, and doing them by hand can give me more precise control over how they appear. The animations I made in this video could all use more time and refinement, but as a dev, it's always good to have a bigger bag of tricks. So there you go. Try it out, have fun, take care friends.